Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. There's an old saying you might have heard before. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, on the surface, that makes sense. I mean, you drop a heavy rock on my leg, I might end up with a big cast. But you yell at me, and I don't even get a scratch, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that, as we're about to discover in the letter from the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. Uh, let's see. What are the most important things they need to know? Paul had spent years teaching the church in Ephesus, but now he was in prison. So he wanted to remind the Ephesians what God had done for them and how it should change the way they treated each other, especially when it came to their words. Hmm. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Your words are strong and powerful. They can make an incredible impact on the people around you, whether that's for good or not. Let's imagine what it might look like if we could actually see our words. You totally rocked it on the field today. Aw, now those words were like a nice pat on the back. Words can be incredibly encouraging. Hey, I know you've been feeling kind of sad. I'm always here if you need someone to listen. Mmm, that was comforting. Just like a cozy blanket and warm cocoa. But we don't always use our wordy superpowers for good. Wow, did you even look in the mirror this morning? Ouch, oh, that burned. Things are getting messy here. <laughs> and if you get really angry, well, that's when your words can be real zingers. You are so mean, I wish you weren't my brother. Ooh, thoughtless words can shatter someone, break apart relationships. We all make mistakes with our words sometimes. We all end up hurting others with the things we say. But when that happens, sometimes we get a second chance to use our words wisely. I'm really, really sorry. That was an awful thing to say. Can you forgive me? Just like your words can hurt people and break relationships, Words can also be uh, the glue that puts them back together. Your words can actually bring healing. Think about it. Every single one of us has the power to make or break somebody else's day with just a few words. Whether you write it, speak it, type it, or shape it, your words are an incredible tool. You may not have the money to buy somebody an expensive gift, but the note you write or the encouraging thing you say in the hall may mean even more to them. So think about your words, each one. Weigh them carefully. Picture actually what they might look like when they come out of your mouth, a knife that cuts deep or an encouraging pat on the back. Remember, Paul believed our words are so important to God that he wrote about it from prison. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Hey, True Kids, it's Miss Amber, and we are going to have some fun today. So I don't know about you guys, but I have always always wanted to squeeze out an entire tube of toothpaste. So let's do this, shall we? So, ooh. oh, it's gonna be so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Look at the colors, guys. Oh my gosh. I can hear my mom yelling at me now, guys. What are you doing? But it's so much. Oh my gosh, there's so much toothpaste in there. 
I could brush my teeth for two months off of this. Oh, we're almost out. Oh my gosh. It's all out. That was so much fun. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. I would do it again if I could. That was so much fun. But I still got to use this. So like I said, this is enough toothpaste for two months. So let's try to get it back in here. Oh. Uh-oh. I may have made a mistake. <laughs> oh no, I can't get it back in. Oh, that is frustrating. But you know what? Our words are like that too. Words have the power of life or death. They can hurt, they can demean, they can make people feel super yucky or they can show love, compassion, healing, inspire, encourage, give love to someone else. It's all on how we use them. Sometimes we make mistakes. We maybe say words that hurt people's feelings because we got hurt in the process or maybe our friends are doing it, so we join in on it. It never makes us feel good, right? So like the toothpaste, once you say it, you can't take it back. We should always choose our words carefully. We should always make sure that we are saying life-giving words. We are inspiring, we are healing, and we are showing love to everyone around us, no matter the situation. Be known for your kindness and your compassion. You will never, ever regret choosing kindness over hatefulness. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us the ability to heal, to show compassion, and to love with just a few words. Help us to be life-giving people with our words. Show us how to show that compassion that you have shown to us. And thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, that's all, True Kids. I'll see you all next time. Hey, guys, it's Memory Verse time. I am so excited. This is the last time of the month that we're going to be doing this Memory Verse, and I know that all of you guys know it so well. So let's get right into it, okay? All righty. Our Memory Verse again is Luke 16, 10. Well, the first time we're just going to go over it. Let's see what you remember. If you can be trusted with something very little, then you can be trusted with something very large. Luke 16, 10. All right, let's do something really fun. I want you to say the memory verse so loud that your parents hear you in the other room and they'll be so excited to hear you re reciting the memory verse. Are you ready? As loud as you can. If you can be trusted with something very little, then you can be trusted with something very large. Woo, that is going to be Luke 16, 10. One more time, one more time. How about if we say the memory verse running in place? Ready? If you can be trusted with something very little, then you can be trusted with something very large. Luke 16, 10. Woo, you guys did a great job. Sticks and stones and wood are wood are can never hurt. Have you heard that phrase before? Oh, <laughs> I said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Do you think that's true? I mean, I guess a word is never going to actually like break an arm or a leg, but can someone's words hurt you? I think so. How about this? Have you ever hurt somebody else with your words? I have. Why do we do that? If we follow Jesus, 
It's our responsibility to use our words wisely. The Apostle Paul wrote, Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Our words should be helpful. We should use them to encourage people. You're doing such a great job. I'm so proud of you. We should use words to comfort. It's going to be okay. When life gives you lemons, like lemonade. And you should definitely use your words without this thing. It's not always easy to control what you say, but a good place to start is to try and think before you speak. Think. Are these words helpful or hurtful? Do they build up or tear down? Take a few seconds, especially if you're mad or upset, to think before you say words that hurt. Here's the rule for life to remember today. Use your words wisely. Simple to say, not so simple to do. You're going to need God's help for sure. So, to sum up, sticks and stones are like lions, but words may also hurt. Here you go! Are you gonna? Huh? Huh? Huh?